Hello friends, welcome back to another Tottenham Hotspur match review. This time we're talking about a victory, which is hard to come by lately. Um, I didn't do a match review after Arsenal because I was depressed and uh, it was terrible. And it kind of sent me in the spiral where I was um, reminiscing, I guess, about the good old days at Tottenham where... Um, you know, we were facing Dortmund, we were facing um, Barcelona, and we were doing all the stuff in the Champions League. And, you know, even though it wasn't expected we would always be towards the top of that competition, we were facing these teams that were there. And sometimes we could put up a fight. And you know what? I still think we could put up a fight. Sometimes. Anyways... So when I was looking forward to this game, I wasn't. I, <laughs> I was like, uh, some team I've never even heard of that got founded like 10 years ago, if that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's depressing right now. Um, and it's depressing to go on social media, and it's depressing to listen to podcasts, and it's depressing to just be a Tottenham fan, if I'm quite honest. Um... Yeah, I, I heard someone on the TIFO Football Podcast, I forget who it was, but I heard someone on the TIFO Football Podcast say, um, I guess we had always been overachieving, even under Pochettino. What happened to my light? Um, can I have my light back, please? What? What? Um, but I heard someone say that we were always overachieving, even under Poch. Like, it was all a fluke. Um... Oh my god, what is happening? Okay, you know what? There, perfect. But basically saying we were always overachieving. Uh, you know, the, the, the glorious stuff we had under Potch, it was all a fluke. Not, well, okay, it wasn't quite like he was saying that. But it was the fact that we didn't, we didn't deserve to be in that conversation of one of the top teams in England. We didn't deserve to constantly be in the Champions League for some reason. Pissed me off. We, we are there. We should be there. That is what I am mad about. That is what I, I think about every single time we're in one of these stupid competitions with these stupid teams that I don't even know. It's, it's infuriating. It's infuriating to be where we are because people forget what Tottenham is supposed to be. We are not supposed to be a team that is supposed to be on the top of the midfield battle. That is not who we are. We are bigger than that, and we should be bigger than that. Our stadium's bigger than that. Our players are bigger than that. It makes me mad when I hear that stuff. We, we are not mid-table mediocrity. We shouldn't be. Um... And that's why I'm mad, because, it, like, there's so much that has gone wrong recently uh, with the appointment of Mourinho and with the appointment of, uh, I don't want to say Nuno yet, because I'm still giving him time. I am still giving Nuno time, but, yeah, not inspiring, and I'm, I'm just, uh, I wish we could be back there. Basically, after Sunday, I was I was just in a state where I was like, oh my god, I just wish we could go back to when we were competing at the highest level, and, um, and I could have, and I could be in those conversations and be like, oh my god, um, you see Harry Kane in the Champions League with the little logo on his shirt, it's so cool, it's... It's amazing, and it, you don't have the same problem as we did today with the commentator, right? Where he was like, oh, Giovanni Lasoso takes the ball. It was Brian Hill! It was it was Brian Hill! It wasn't Giovanni Lasoso. The, the, the fact that someone, one of the commentators, doesn't even know who our players are, from Giovanni Lasoso to Brian Hill... Again, infuriates me. That doesn't happen in the Champions League. Or at least, it shouldn't. Anyways, that's my rant about where we are as a 
club right now. Over. Um, let's talk about the game. Four two three one. Four two three one. I like it. Um, look, I like the four three three. If you have a really really good possession based um, coach that can work with it, um, a la Pep Guardiola, a la the you know maybe too too cool um etc etc Pochettino um however it's not working for us because as has been pointed out there's no midfield um what I did see today and yes Miro were terrible I, I don't I don't know who they are um but what I will say is that they didn't give us that much time on the ball um, especially in the first half when they were still pressing and stuff. And I did notice some good things. And here are the some good things. The 4-2-3-1 in our system allows us to drop those center midfielders back, cover the wide areas more so, or they switch off. Um, and, I mean, it's a very basic thing, but you allow Doherty to run forward, you allow Region to run forward, and what that does is it allows us to um, pass to them, and, you know, they will look down the line for those wingers going across, so that is some form of creativity. We allow our fullbacks to create, and also the extra midfielder, um, well, not an extra midfielder, but an extra deep midfielder, gives the chance to, okay, let's see, um, you know, skip and Region. They were, they were like here and here, right? Um, and say if there were a bunch of mirror players around both of them and Region has the ball, there's Winks over here who is open for a pass. So what Region can do is just ping it over to Winks and then he can also switch the play and give it to Doherty and then cycle, cycle, cycle. It's not what was um, in the previous games where it would just be Hoybier and the back line, you know, going bink, 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 and constantly being pressured. It was more like, you know, Romero would journey forward give the ball to Winks, who would then see a pass open to Region and go whoop, and then Region would run down the line, see Brian Hill open, and then dart for it. Better. Better in possession. Uh, I think the 4-2-3-1 suits what Nuno's trying to do better, maybe. Um, I actually did like what I saw from Winks today. Um, really composed in possession, had some really nice switches, uh, fought for the ball, um, as as um, is typical in recent performances. I thought um, Skip was amazing. I thought he really, really hassled people for the ball, and I thought, um, yeah, I thought he was superb and almost had a glorious goal, too. Um, let's see. A lot of people gave Delhi shit for his performance. I thought he was good. Um, especially in the first half, I thought, I thought he, uh, was one of our most, um, productive players. Um, so I, I, I just don't know. Like, you know, he ran to set up that first goal, um, and it was a good run and, um, you know, someone found him and then it led to the first goal and that's always important and that's what Delhi does. Um, I think a lot of people expect Delhi to be like this Ericsson, or I I don't really know what people expect from Delhi, but he's never going to be the creative impetus constantly providing chances for his teammates. He's never going to be the guy who's always going to look great on the ball or composed. Um, what he does is he takes a lot of chances and he... Um, he fights for the ball constantly, and he he does try to create something out of nothing constantly. And when you do that, you lose the ball a lot. Um, and you know this isn't 
totally defending him. There were definitely times where I was frustrated with him. But what I will say is that Deli Ali, at his best, can pretty much go through a game, have bad games, but still get on the end of the score sheet um, when the game is said and done just because of the way he plays and because he's a constant goal out, uh, a goal threat. Um, and he has two goals this season. Not terrible, both penalties, I believe. But um, still, you know, I, I think putting him on the pitch does provide goals. And I think he's a hard worker. I just don't see the problem with Delhi right now. I, I, I mean, he's not quite like a black hole of possession. I, I think, again, he's another player who would really benefit from a heavily possession-based system. So um, he isn't responsible for creating chances all the time and stuff. Um, La Celso had an amazing game. Amazing, amazing game. Again, Mira, terrible. But beautiful shot um, for that first goal. Beautiful um, just instinct. Yeah, I thought he was good. Uh, really good. And beautiful pass to Kane for the last goal to set up his hat trick. Um Romero. Again, I just want to say he should be our starting center back week in, week out. I don't understand why he's not. Um, the fact that he played today worries me. Maybe he's still coming up to fitness. I don't know. But um, he just gives us so much more on the ball than pretty much any of our other center backs. And for the record, I thought Roden was amazing as well. Um, and I would really like to see both of them given a chance in the Premier League. And you guys know how much I like Eric Dyer. But really be open to seeing a Romero Rodan partnership. Um, Reggion, again, good. Um, yeah, you know, he had another Reggion performance. It's not anything spectacular, but, you know, threatened a lot. Uh, Brian Hill, good again. Just very fun to watch. Very, it's nice to see someone put an effort constantly and try and create by running down the wing, old-fashioned, just cut it back and see what happens. Uh, Scarlet, I've also seen getting some slack today. I thought he pulled off some really good moves, um, was heavily involved in the build-up for both goals, I thought, um, at both of the first goals, and didn't think he was bad. That one little nutmeg move was really cool. Um, someone said he was slow. Yeah, I did think... <laughs> it was funny watching him because I was like, that's like Harry Kane-esque. He looks like he's um running at full speed, but like it looks like he has a parachute behind him or something. Like, you know, <laughs> he's like running against the wind uh, and just can't quite get up to top speed when he, after the nutmeg thing. Um, but I think I've seen him run faster than that. I, I think that was just a really weird moment. I don't know what was happening there. Um yeah, and then Kane came on and, I guess, shut people like me up. I've been criticizing him a lot. And, um, yeah, you know, you put Harry Kane in front of the goal and provide him the ball right in front of the goal, he's going to score. Uh, those goals, you're like, yes, again, de defending bad, Mira bad. However, you get the ball to Harry Kane's feet right, at, right in the box, and he's going to find a way to get a shot and test the keeper at least um it's it's so much more simple than people think and i i do think a large part of the reason why harry kane hasn't been good is because the team hasn't been good controversial opinion i know um do i think harry kane could have been better as well yes um but again some of the finishes he did were not easy uh taking the touch and the next touch being the shot and then scoring is is difficult um and he he worked really hard to get those opportunities and um it was good play to set him up for those as well and i hope we find ways to do that in the premier league because i do still think he is an amazing player and i think the the stuff about him being like totally un disinterested and totally Oh, shape and not bothered are, are kind of over exaggerated and I would say that um, you know he just takes a while to get going pretty much every 
season and this is another star of the season and he didn't have much rest so here we are um do i think kane do i think kane is partly responsible for his slow start to the season with his vacation and blah 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 absolutely i don't i'm, I'm not trying to defend harry kane i'm just saying to get the best out of harry kane um i i still i i think you have to give him those touches inside the box um yeah what else happened I guess people were upset um, of the three changes, and yeah, I, I completely understand it. We shouldn't have to be relying on that, and especially against the weakest opponents in the group um, at home, you should really be looking to just play the kids, right? Like, like this is a, a, a like I say that, and um, you know, you see Dane Scarlett here, you see uh, Oliver Skip here. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the only people who got um, a look in from the youth side. I mean, Brian Hill, you could argue, but we paid a lot of money for him. Um, yeah, a mole. You would like to see a, a lot of people are asking for Mark Conde to step up and and get a few minutes, and I am one hundred percent for that. Um back-to-back -back hat tricks in the in the Premier League too I mean really killing it um I don't know what message Nuno's sending to him but like you, you would think sooner or later he would get a look in right um yeah I just expected to see more youth players in this um yeah I was going to expand on what we should do for Aston Villa on Sunday but I don't really have enough time for that. This is already a 17-minute video because of my ranting. Um, but I hope you enjoyed nonetheless. Leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Um, please let me know. Since I am upset with the Tottenham situation, I have two options for FIFA 22, right? I've gone it to work, and I have it um, like a test for Corin Ghana, et cetera, et cetera. Um, would you like a creator club where we pretty much reincarnate Tottenham and try and um, take over their place in North London being the new Lily Whites or something because this team is so far removed from what we were? Or do we just take control of Tottenham, say I'm the manager now, and go on with it? Leave me feedback in the comment section down below. Um, I will heavily appreciate and read it, and I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Um, <laughs> we're in a weird spot here, but I'm very happy that we won a game. I'll see you guys next time. See ya. Come on, you Spurs.